monarchy's long history. In 2022, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II became the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum jubilee. The celebrations took place over a four-day bank holiday, millions of Brits parted in street parties and people around the world joined in on the celebrations. But is celebrating the British monarch harmless fun, or does it normalise the monarchy's long history of colonialism? And is it a celebration of British imperialism? Here are four ways in which the British royal family has benefited from colonialism. They have historically benefited from the enslavement of human beings. In 1562, John Hawkins was the first Englishman to include African people in his cargo. He traded these people for ginger and sugar. On his next voyage in 1564, Queen Elizabeth I funded a vessel for his journey. The British East India Company was formed in 1600 to exploit trade with Southeast Asia. They did that by colonizing land and exploiting people through the transatlantic slave trade. The figure who signed the Royal Charter allowing this all to happen was also Elizabeth I. Between 1690 and 1807, an estimated 6 million Africans were transported from Africa to the Americas on British or Anglo-American ships. The royal family and the British Parliament protected the trade. After Elizabeth I's death, the Royal African Company was established in 1660 by the Duke of York. The company transported more than 187,000 slaves who were often branded DY for the Duke of York. It's difficult to say how much the royals benefited from slavery, but many say it funded the entire British treasury. And it's safe to say that much of the monarch's significance, power and wealth stems from the enslavement of Africans. Lucy Worsley, the chief curator of royal historic palaces, says that all royal palaces from the 17th century have an element of money which is derived from slavery, including Kensington Palace and Hampton Court. The royal family was built on a legacy of stolen land, goods and atrocities. Queen Elizabeth II's largest diamond, the Kohinoor, was stolen from a 10-year-old prince in India along with his land in the 19th century. It was transferred to Queen Mary in 1911 and was handed down to the current queen. Both India and Pakistan have asked for the diamond's return, but it's still very much owned by the crown. In India between the 1700s and mid-20th century, an estimated $45 trillion was stolen by the British under the vestiges of the crown. Famines, which occurred as a result of Britain's non-intervention policy, led to the death of more than 30 million Indians. In 1947, Lord Mountbatten, a royal and the viceroy of India, decided he wanted to get Britain out of India quickly. The decision to carve up a country led to 15 million people being displaced and between 1 and 2 million people dying. Of course, this is just India. At its peak, Britain had colonized 25% of the world's surface. From the Mau Mau Massacre in Kenya to concentration camps in South Africa, Britain, under the vestiges of the Crown, has a long and bloody history of colonial atrocities. And the royals have historically been at the centre of them. The prestige of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is an organisation of 52 independent member states. What it actually is is a collection of former British colonies and Rwanda and Mozambique. The Commonwealth originated after World War II when much of India and Africa was becoming independent. The Commonwealth claims that it is an association of sovereign nations working towards shared goals of prosperity, democracy and peace. But critics say that the association promotes neocolonialism through free trade agreements, which favour more developed economies. British companies own more than $1 trillion of Africa's key resources. The Queen is the head of the Commonwealth and Charles has been appointed her successor, which allows the British monarchy to remain in a position of international privilege and go on tours of Commonwealth countries. But that's not all. In 2022, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth 